In this video, we're going to take a look at comparisons as well as jump operations, which are going to allow us to act based on the results of comparisons. And generally, when we talk about comparisons, we're talking about the typical Boolean type operators that we would see in higher level languages, you know, checking to see if one number is less than another, greater than another, equal to another, not equal to another, these types of operations. And generally, you'll see that these operations are all available inside of x86, and we can use them in conjunction with jumps to be able to do things like conditional logic, like if statements, this type of idea. So we'll take a look at a few different examples of this. But to start off, we should get an understanding of how we actually do comparisons in x86. And to answer that, let's take a look at a really simple example. I'm going to move it to eax the value 3. I'm going to move it to ebx the value 2. And I'm going to compare these two. And the way that I would typically do that is using a CMP or compare operation or instruction. So generally, what we would do here is we would provide two different operands. So in this case, I'm going to give it my two registers, EAX and EBX. What this is going to do is it's going to subtract these two registers from each other. And then it's going to discard the result that it gets. But it's going to use that result to set the E flags register. And what the e flags register is being used for is it's being used to determine what the result of that subtraction was. Now, the reason why this works, or the reason why we're really doing this, is because consider what happens when we subtract two values. There's three main outcomes that we'll get out of that. So, for instance, in this first result, it's going to take eax and subtract it from ebx. So that'll give us 3 minus 2, which would be equal to 1, but we don't really care about the value. What we care about is, is it positive, negative, or zero? If it's positive, that tells us a little bit of information. It tells us that EAX was bigger than EBX, right? Because the only way for the subtraction to be positive is if the first number, EAX, is bigger than the second number. Now, what if we flip this around? If it was 2 and 3, if we subtracted those from each other, we would get negative 1. Because this result was negative, it tells us that the first number must have been smaller than the second number. And then similarly, if they're equal to each other, so if they were both 3, for instance, we would get 0. The only way that that could happen is if the values are equal to each other. So by taking a look at the result of the subtraction, we can determine if the value is less than, greater than, or equal to. Now, a lot of people who have looked at this and maybe made the astute observation that if we have negative numbers, this doesn't really work out the way that we would expect it, right? What if I took, you know, negative 3 and subtracted it from positive 3, right? I'd end up with negative 6, and that doesn't really seem to follow the rules of what we're talking about. It turns out that we need a little bit more than just the sign flag in this case to see if it's positive or negative. There are other flags that are at play in this sort of operation, things like the overflow flag, the carry flag, that we would typically take a look at in terms of these comparisons. But generally, what I'm going to say is that it's really only required for you to understand that this compare instruction takes a look at these two values and it tells you the result of EAX compared to EBX. So it'll tell you if EAX is bigger, smaller, or equal to EBX. That's generally what I want you to take away from that. Now, using this type of idea, we could do operations based on these particular results. So for instance, suppose that I want to do something specific only if EAX is less than EBX. What I could do is I could do a jump, which is J, and then there's a whole bunch of different jumps that exist. For instance, JL is jumping if the result of the comparison is less than. So that meaning EAX is less than EBX. Let me show you an example of this. So if I do jump lower or jump uh, less than, right, we can give it a label to jump to. And our label is just like this start label here. We can put more of these in our program. So I can call one lesser. And then I can add in the lesser label here. And maybe this moves something into ECX. I don't know, like the value 1, for instance. And then we end the program. Now, something that you'll sort of see here is that although this jumps when it's less than, it will jump to lesser, what would happen is after this instruction, if the value isn't lesser, what will happen is it will automatically fall into this code here. So we actually have to jump if it isn't less as well. And the way that we could do that is using just a jump instruction. What this will do is it will always execute no matter what. It doesn't go based on a condition, it just always runs. So we could say something like this. We could say jump to end. And then what I could do is I could just sort of add in this end label here. 
So generally what this code is gonna do is it's gonna take a look at the values in EAX and EBX. If EAX is less than EBX, it will jump to the lesser label here. So this one right here. Otherwise, this instruction doesn't execute. Instead, this one does, and it jumps to the end of the program. So that's the way that this general control flow structure is working. Let me show you that in our debugger because it will make it a lot more clear exactly what's happening. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we'll break at start. We'll take a look at our ASM layout, we'll run. So EIX is three, EBX is two. The result of that is not going to be lesser. So if we step, notice that we don't actually take this jump. We don't actually jump to this point, right? Instead, we go down to this end instruction, and when I step into that, it takes me straight to the interrupt. Do you see how we skipped over this lesser portion? That happened because EAX is not less than EBX, right? So that's the way that those instructions are generally working. Let's take a look at another example of this because it's helpful to just you know get a better understanding of exactly how this is working. If I make this lesser like this, let's take a look at what happens. So if I go ahead and, oh, sorry, I have to uh, actually do the linker as well. Let's do that. Just give it one more try here. There we go. Now, if I take a look at this code here, we should see the opposite type of situation occur, right? So what's gonna happen is in this case, EAX is less than EBX. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the jump lower. So notice now it goes to this lesser label here. It moves one into ECX and then it interrupts and we're done. So do you see generally the way that that is going to work? So it takes this JL only if the value from the comparison shows that the first thing is less than the second thing. That's generally the way that this is working. So it's important to understand a few different things out of this. For one, we do have the ability to jump around our code based on comparisons. And for two, everything works procedurally, right? So we have to be very careful about the fact that when we do this kind of branching, we need to always have this sort of else condition that says, okay, if we didn't take the branch, we do need to go somewhere else. Otherwise we end up just following right into this branch. And then, you know, we're sort of, you know, executing the code no matter what. So we have to be very careful about that. So I'll show you a few more examples of this as we go through. I'll show you a few more videos with some examples of ways that we could use this type of uh, jump logic. The last sort of thing that I want to go over here is I just want to give you a few more of the jumps that exist. JE is jump equals. So we'll do it if uh, EIX equals EBX. J and E is not equals. So if EIX does not equal EBX. Uh, JG is jump greater. So EIX is greater than EBX. We have greater than or equal to, which is GE. We have less than, which we already saw. We have less than or equal to, which we'll do it if EAX is less than or equal to EBX. And then we have jump if zero. So basically it will jump if the result is zero. And then we have not zero, which jumps if the result is not zero. And just one final piece here, uh, if you sort of remember the idea of the fact that these are subtracting each other, jump equals will jump if the result of this comparison is zero, right? Similarly, JZ is going to do the same sort of thing. So in this case, these two instructions are equivalent to each other. So I just wanted to point that out, that those two are equivalent. And you can actually see that generally, you know, if you make these both equal to each other, you'll be able to see that JE and JZ are going to give you the exact same result. So with this, you know, have a bit of a better understanding of some conditional logic in x86. In the next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how we can implement things like looping using these kinds of comparisons because they allow us to do repetition of instructions fairly easily. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.